is is Kalinda. My middle name is Pia. I've actually uh, changed my name to Pia, and that happened after my near death. Um, I live in Vernon, BC, Canada, and I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. And okay, so I've had a, a few near death experiences in my life, and I think it was spirit um, trying to give me a shake. And I've had, I've gone through everything you can think of in life. Um, and the spirit was trying to get me on a road to see. And I can get into that later. But the last one was for me really to have a kick in the pants, so to speak. I, um, I dabbled with drugs. I was homeless. I was all these different things in my life. And about six years ago, I was going from here to there. I was traveling all over the place. I was living all over the place. And I was living at this point. I still had things in the back of my car. And I had moved um, to a lakeside resort just outside of Kelowna, BC. And it was a lake and I was on the side of a mountain. And it was in the middle of winter. And I didn't stay uh, too many places too long. So I had still had a lot of the things in the back of my car. And I'd lived out there and um, I decided in the middle of a big snowfall, I wanted to go get something from town. And I lived about 45 minutes outside of town because I was in the middle of the mountain range and it went all the way down to the lake. So I knew that I shouldn't go out that night, but I, I just have this personality where if I want to do something, I'm going to do it regardless of the consequences, that sort of thing. So I got in my truck. I had, I knew the tires were bad and I just did it anyways because I wanted to do it. And I got in my car and I started driving to town. Well, I was driving along the mountainside. It was dark out. There was a lot of snow and I, I rounded the corner of this mountainside and there was no barriers at all and as i rounded one of the one of the mount one of the curves around the mountain i hit some black ice and when i hit this black ice i started to swerve along um towards the the cliff of the mountain and the cliff went down pretty far all the way down to the lake and I remember hanging onto the steering wheel and sliding towards the cliff and thinking, I can't stop. I can't stop. I, 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 I'm heading right for the cliff on the driver's side. And I was heading closer and closer and closer. And I knew that I was going to go off the side of the cliff. And the last thing that went through my head is I just gripped onto the steering wheel and I thought, this is the moment of my death because it was really steep and it went all the way down and there's nothing. I, I knew I was losing control and there's nothing I could do to save myself. So the truck started um, and it rolled and it probably rolled about three times and it went from extreme panic to all of a sudden I, everything went into slow motion. The whole truck, I could see, from, it went into slow motion and panic almost until I stopped being panicky and it was almost like I went into this very peaceful zen-like feeling and what should have lasted seconds for the car to just roll, roll, roll right down the hill seemed to last about 10 or 15 minutes, it seemed. It, like everything went super, super slow. And I remember I was as I was rolling, I could see the cups and saucers and cutlery and everything just flying around in my car and I could see the windshield break in half and come forward. I could, I could see the top of the roof um, behind me go right down like a pancake. And I could see the passenger side beside me go down like a pancake, but where I was sitting in, in the driver's side didn't move. And I felt like I was in a cage. Like I had a cage around me where my hands, where I was holding my hands. And I just remember looking around very calmly, very peacefully and seeing everything crash in around me 
except for where I was sitting. And I remember as well looking down by my feet and there was a yellow light, like almost like an orb. And there was a yellow orb type light there. And it all happened so, so fast. And I remember being very warm, very warm, very peaceful. And it's almost like time stood still. It's almost like I was, I, I hovered, like I was just hovering there. In, in the car and something was wrapped around me and I knew that I was being downloaded with something but it happened so fast that all of a sudden I I didn't remember till a little bit later I landed I landed at the bottom and all of a sudden I I think I, I was unconscious. I went unconscious at that time, but I wasn't. I wasn't sure. It was all a mix-up at that time. I got to the bottom of the hill. I landed at the at the bottom, or not at at the middle of the mountain. Some trees had gone through the back of my window to stop the car, and I remember that I was encased in all the snow, and all and there was no lights at the top of that mountain. All I could see is lights, cars going going by and nobody could see me because the whole car was encased in snow and they nobody was going to be able to see me so i made it through the window and i remember trying to find my way crawling up the side of the mountain with my hands and knees so i got to the top of the mountain and i was still on my hands and knees and i was going like this for whatever car would stop so somebody stopped and they said, where did you come from? What What are you doing here on your hands and knees? And I said, oh, I just live up the street here at the resort. Can you take me home? And he said, well, no, I think we should call an ambulance. And I said, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just take me home. And he says, no, we need to call an ambulance. Where did you come from? I said, oh, down there, down there. I was right out of it. And uh, so anyways, the ambulance came, took me to trauma. And uh, I ended up breaking about six ribs. And I uh, I was bleeding out of my head. I had to have my head stapled back together from here all the way back to here. Um, I had a brain hemorrhage. And, and I don't know how I was able to climb up that mountain with six broken ribs and blood pouring out of my head. I, I don't know. I was in shock um, and the adrenaline, I guess, kicked in for me to save myself because nobody would have found me down there. So I, I left the hospital and I got home that night and I laid down and I don't know when I remembered this, but I, I went to sleep and I remember hearing like I was walking. It was almost like a riverbed because I saw trees ahead of me. I saw trees ahead of me and I was walking along a riverbed and it was all kind of rocks, but it was, it was hazy. It was hazy. Like I, like I saw a bunch of people up ahead in the tree line, but it was, I couldn't see them. Like it was almost like fog and people ahead, like lights and, and I can't really, it's hard, so hard to describe up uh, like people's shadows or something but in the light and in the trees and I was standing and it's almost like I wanted to run run towards them and then something stopped me but I didn't see what stopped me but I heard a voice and I was running and all of a sudden I just stopped and I couldn't go any further towards those people and I couldn't see who the people were but I saw lights and almost like a, a gathering over there. It's almost like kind of over a bridge or something and something stopped me and said, no, you've come, you've come this far already. You've learned so many lessons already and this is, you have made a contract to do this. You're almost there. You have a mission, you know, basically you have a mission to do. It's time to go back in so many words. And, um, and you will know, you'll know what to do, you know, basically. And, um, and that's it. So I, uh, I was sent back, I was sent back and 
So when I woke up in the morning, I, I was a completely different person. I, I, I suffered from depression for so many years. The depression was gone. <laughs> it was gone. I, my whole personality was different. I had lost my car. I lived an hour outside of town. I had no family, no friends in that area. I had no way to get food. I had, I couldn't move. I had six broken ribs. I was living in the middle of nowhere, but nothing mattered. Nothing mattered. I, I was so positive and it was just like, everything's going to be fine. It doesn't matter. Everything is going to be fine. And I kept hearing the words of shaman or shamanism or something. And I kept telling my friend, I'm like, I keep hearing shamanism, shaman, all this. I keep hearing these words. And I'm like, I don't, I never heard of shamanism. I don't, I don't even know what a shaman does. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And then the next few weeks after that, I kept feeling this, this heavy urge. Like I have a mission I had have a mission because I couldn't really remember everything, but I knew I had a mission, but I, I was very frustrated because I didn't know what the mission was and I needed to find out what's my mission. What's my mission. I, I need to do something. I need to do something. And, but I didn't know what, and I had changed so much that I was very overwhelmed in the next little while, over the next few months, I became very, very, very overwhelmed by the person that I would quickly become, like very, the depression was gone, uh, the way of thinking was gone, um, the way I looked at things were gone, um, the way I just gave up control over th everything was gone. Um, and that overwhelms me be because I didn't really know who I was anymore. And that I had a little bit of a healing crisis and a crisis over that for a little while. So I went to talk to somebody and she said to me, just ask your angels to back off, like just to, to take it a little bit slower with you. So I asked my angels, I'm like, I don't know what's happening to me, but can you slow down because I can't handle this. And so I asked and it started to slow down and and then over, so now it's been about, I don't know, five years or so. And it's been slowing down, but slowly I started going to spiritual church. I started meeting different people that were spiritual. I um, went back to school for hypnotherapy. And then that started slowly. And then, and then I started to be able to become very, very intuitive. Well, fast forward now, I've been doing hypnotherapy for years, and not only can I do hypnotherapy, now I can tell them what their blocks are. Now I can tell people um, I can channel in session and being conduit for, a conduit for spirit, for spirit. I can take them into their past lives. I can uh, bring people to past loved ones that have passed away. Like I'm, I fully embrace I can spirit um can uh pass messages to me and now I fully understand why why because for a long time I thought I had a curse because from the age of three I have had a life of hell on earth I'm just telling you a hell on earth and I thought why me why me I've gone through addiction, abuse, like um, Stockholm syndrome, um, a narcissist, I've gone through molestation, I've gone through homelessness, I've gone through every single thing you can think of and um, abandoned by my parent, like every single thing. And, and I thought, I've, I've tried suicide, I've, you know, every single thing. And I've almost died a few times. I was in ICU. I've, I've, my babies died. I've, you know, everything. And there's so many things where I've wanted to give up. And I've even took pills one time and, and I tried to spit them out. And then I heard, okay, 
That's all we wanted to know. I very, it was very quick. Spirit spoke to me and said, after I spit the pills out, okay, that's all we needed to know. And I heard a distinct voice say that. And they wanted to know if I wanted to live or wanted to die at that time. But they kicked my butt a few times and I kept going back into a dark place. I couldn't learn the lessons. And I kept going back and being a victim. And this last time, I was tired. I was very tired of all the things I had to get through. And I did get through them. And what they showed me this last time is this is it. Are you going to finally do the work that you came here to do? And um, when I went down that cliff, I um, that was it for me. I've never looked back to addiction, to, um, to being a victim, to anything. And now I can see that everything that I've suffered and everything that I had to go through was for a bigger plan, was for me to help my clients because everybody that comes to sit in this chair, I can relate. I can relate to rape. I can relate to addiction. I can relate to molestation. I can relate to homelessness. I can relate to not having family. I can relate to losing a child. I can relate. I can relate. I can relate. And you know, yeah, it's been spirit told me that first half was hell, but you know, it's because I walked through every single thing in my life and that this was my, this was my life's journey. And yeah, I was tired. So my soul wanted to drive off that cliff, but spirit said, no, you're almost there. You're not giving up yet. You're not giving up yet. You have a mission here. And now I know, I didn't know then, but I absolutely know 100% that I'm doing my mission because when these people come in for hypnotherapy and I'm clearing past life trauma, I'm clearing karma, I'm clearing ancestral traumas, I'm helping people get over molestations, I'm helping people go back and, and face their perpetrators in hypnosis, and I'm clearing all this stuff, and I'm seeing people that they've gone through years of therapy, and they're, I'm helping them get to deep roots, and I'm helping change lives, I understand now why i can handle this this deep, deep stuff with them it's, it's when it was happening it's like everything was slow motion like i said it seemed to last what was should have been two like seconds lasted about 15 minutes and it didn't last 15 minutes so i feel i went somewhere like another dimension or something. Cause I, I think I went to that place, but I, I, I don't remember what happened there, but it seemed to last a very long time because everything was in slow motion. And I remember seeing that light. So, but that's all I remember and it lasting a very long time, but it wasn't until after I went to the hospital and then I went to sleep that night that the next morning as I remembered everything that worked, it wasn't until I actually had time to rest my body and maybe at night during the night because I can astral travel now and I can see a lot of things. And what I saw was that was my dad had died, has died over 20 years ago. And that was my dad sitting behind me. And the reason why he was sitting behind me is because he told me if he wasn't sitting there, I would have broke my back. And that makes sense because I broke all my ribs. Why wouldn't I have broken my back? He sat there and saved me from that because I would have broken my back. And I would have been um, probably in a wheelchair or something. And he know he said he knows me. And he said, I wouldn't have done good in a wheelchair. And I would have given up. And I wouldn't have done what I'm doing. Because I'm the kind of girl that if you know me, I wouldn't do good in a wheelchair. Well, when I was going through everything I've gone through, you know, I, I turned to drugs, I turned to alcohol, I was suicidal, I was depressed, I was all the stuff. And, you know, I understand when you're when you're in it, you, you don't understand. But what I know now is this where we are, this isn't this is a school, 
You know, we're not from here. We're from the other side. And our soul, our soul is here to grow. Okay. And these are all lessons. These are all just lessons. And to just hold on and, and to get through it. And every time you get through this, you know, whether it be addiction or losing a child or, you know, some of these things that I've gone through, it makes you grow so much stronger. And once you get on the other side of that, it's these, it's not going to kill you and it makes you so much stronger. And you have to understand that, you know, this we're, we're spiritual be beings having um, an earthly experience. You know, we're not from here. Like we're from the other side. We've come here to experience, experience these things, you know, and, and we, we set out before we even come, you know, I set out now to clear a lot of karma. That's why, you know, I'm not embarrassed to tell you I was an addict and I was this and I was that because I came to clear a lot of karma this time around, you know, that was my soul's choice. And, um, it was hard. Yeah, it was really hard, you know, but, uh, I go through it. I go, I went through it and um and people get get really stuck on that and if they can learn to forgive and let go and accept and and that's what i try to do with hypnosis i always show people the other side and you know and try to help them see see the bigger picture and learn how to forgive and let go and accept so they can free those free themselves from from that you know that's that's what i try to do so we can move forward move forward from that lesson so you don't have to stay stuck in it it's just a lesson you know and there's always going to be more lessons and then you just grow stronger and 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 forward